Hi, Karen here. I was tagged by my YouTube friends, Brad and Amy. Hello, my baby. Hello, okay. my honey. To talk about why I started a YouTube channel. There are 10 questions, so let's get started. And while I get started, I wanted to relax a little bit with a lovely blood orange gin and tonic. I hope I have enough ice in there. I figure as it's orange, it's probably good for you. Why did I start YouTube? Funnily enough, there were two reasons. One was I actually wanted to have some sort of part-time employment in my retirement. I know I don't look it, but retirement is not that far away from me. The thing though that I was going to do for this part-time employment isn't ads or anything like that. I was actually going to set up a web page and do something I've never done on my channel and that is sell some of my art. And I do plan on maybe doing some art stuff uh, in the upcoming year. Haven't even started that. I haven't set up the web page. I haven't even thought about that. I have always been interested in film. I've always been interested in doing things like writing screenplays and I'm a big movie goer and I just thought that that would be a really interesting thing. Lastly, I have two daughters that are in their 20s and if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Seize the day. Gather ye rose but while ye may. The other thing is that I want to show my daughters that people aren't just to be put out to pasture at a certain age. Come on, Mum. Time to go. Go? Go where? The old people's home. They'll look after you now. Are you mad? I'm 55. There are other things that you can do. You can, you can change the direction of your life at any age. And I've always been one to do that. There aren't that many middle-aged female role models that I can even look up to. Nope. No. Nope. Ah, maybe. What would I tell myself on day one, knowing what I know now? I suppose the number one thing that most YouTubers say, it's a lot more work than you think it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching a video of Cody Warner. <laughs> I fell, fell down. Let me bring you up to speed. And I picked up the 10X rule. What that means is that However long you think it's going to take you, it's actually 10 times more work than you think it's going to be. And last thing I would tell myself on day one is that it is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I've had so much fun and I, I love reading comments and I love exchanging funny things with people and I, I, I'm just having a blast and I hope it never ends. What camera do I use and what camera accessories? That has changed. When I started my YouTube channel, I was using my little iPhone 5C and it was the only phone I had. So it was a real inconvenience because I used it obviously for work. It took a few recordings before I realized, turn your ringer off because halfway through recording something, my ringer would go off and you know, what a hassle that was. But I had a little portable and there goes my phone. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Now I have Canon 750D, I believe it is. It's a typical uh, DSLR. It has a flip out screen, which I really like. But I do have a bit of an upgraded phone. I have now got an iPhone 6S, I believe it's called. Hand me down for my daughter. How is it that in the old days when your parents, your kids got your old phones and then as they get older, the parents get the kids' old phones? I still use my phone when I'm on airplane for airplane shots. I also use it for uh, photography. Another accessory that I really like is my gimbal. And I use a gimbal for that nice steady sort of shot and I get a lot of b-roll with that. And I do have drone shots once in a while. I I have a tripod, I have a couple of tripods, I had those from before. Lighting that I use, I have a halo light that I've always used. I also have standing lamps. My future equipment, I want to buy 
a new camera. It's a toss-up between an Insta360, and that is because of Brad and Amy. Or it's going to be that little DJI Mini Pro whatever it's called, that Sunny Granite she uses all the time. Today, I'll mostly be talking about the Insta360 ONE X versus the Osmo Pocket. I love Sunny's videos, but I cannot decide which one is going to be my next one, but it's going to be one of those two. And by the way, I just got to say, would you guys stop coming up with these really expensive things? I cannot afford you to be my friends anymore. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have to drop you like a hot potato. Stop doing such cool things with such neat equipment. All right? What editing software do I use? I use Premiere Pro and I've used Premiere Pro right from the start. I had a feeling I was going to enjoy editing a lot and oh my god, I love editing. I love to try different things and I wish I had more time to do even more. I, I try to incorporate something new in every video that I do. And I still plan on doing that. I was just learning something for my next video. I love filming surprises and to see if people notice a little surprise. For example, I don't think anybody noticed this surprise. So I'm here to, as I say, talk about what is it that I find so great about skiing. Did you see that? Premiere Pro editing is overwhelming. Honestly, I sit and watch Hollywood movies and now my line is, oh, Premiere Pro can do that. The way that I learned it was that I signed up for free two months with Skillshare and they had tutorials on there and that was such a good way to do it. Now I find tutorials on YouTube. My favorite ones that I go to for sort of special effects or something to add things a little bit special to my uh, videos. I love Colin at Video Influencers. I love the Dutch guy, Orange83. Uh, I love Justin Adisho. I love Adobe in a minute. That guy is fantastic. And I also love Peter McKinnon for his things. But you know what Peter McKinnon does? He always leaves out one step. <sighs> I wonder if he does that on purpose. So the follow-up question to number four is, what is my number one editing tip for beginner YouTubers? Definitely sign up for Skillshare. The other editing tip that I have, I know it's asked me for my number one, <laughs> but I've got a couple more. Another number one is that you've got to make sure you have good sound. Every YouTuber says that. Every consumer of YouTube says that as well. And the second number one editing tip, I actually think I'm up to the third number one editing tip. As a new filmmaker, shoot way more footage than you need. Shoot way more. Because you don't know what you're doing. It, it's really interesting. You'd never know which are the videos that are going to take a lot of footage. My little Norway tape about how not to miss a plane. I actually had to count it because I couldn't believe it when I saw my file folder of all the footage that I had. I had well over 200 um, clips. I don't know, 250, 260, something like that. And there were actually about 80 clips used in that little video. You'd never guess, but that's how much of these little clips are all put together. Sometimes if you think in your head, I think that's going to be a really good shot, you may need multiple shots. The little robot shot that I had at the end in Stavanger Airport, that took me 20 takes. That little bugger of a robot, it kept turning off or it would stop, turn and look at me. What music do I use and do I have suggestions on music? Absolutely epidemic sound. These guys are so amazing. They're so talented. I absolutely love them. It's, it's endless. These, these guys, I would love to go visit them. I think they're in Sweden. Thank you for the music. How do I make thumbnails? Do I have any tips? The site that I use for my thumbnails is Canva and it's easy to use. I use the free version, but when I look at experts in guidance and advice on thumbnails like Brian G. Johnson, Brian G. Johnson. he says use neon colors and simple cartoon images and such. I know you're supposed to do that. I cannot bring myself to do it. I'm trying different thumbnails, I'm trying things. I think some things work better than others, there's no doubt. I, I'm still experimenting when it comes to thumbnails. I think everybody's got to do that. What is the number one strategic tip that has helped me gain subscribers? All I can think of is that I made the decision I would post once a week. I work full time 
and I have a family and I have other other things that I do what got me there was posting once a week also too if you find that you do something that works duplicate it I suppose the number one strategic tip that I don't follow is to have a niche everybody says that every successful youtuber says that find your niche find your niche I just can't decide what my niche is I just can't narrow it down to one thing that I would say, this is my one thing that I'm going to do. But I do remember I talked to someone who's a friend, said to her, oh, I'm thinking about doing a YouTube channel. And I said, but this niche thing, I don't have a niche. And I said, for instance, why am I not passionate about something like, I don't know, Mongolian throat singing? And I said, you know, what? Nobody's out there doing Mongolian throat singing. Maybe I should do that. And then I actually looked up Mongolian throat singing. Fourteen million views of Mongolian throat singing. Another one, 4.6 million views of Mongolian throat singing. So, you know, as weird as a niche may be, it seems to work. <laughs> How I fight discouragement and burnout? Well, yes, I've been discouraged sometimes. I, I put a lot of work into a video and then, oh, 35 views. And I really, really had to work hard to get that weekly video out sometimes. I did feel a little bit frazzled a few months ago. And then I thought, you know, I'm the one who imposed that once a week video on myself. So a couple months ago, I took a couple weeks off. YouTube didn't fold up and die. I, I was amazed. Uh, but I took the couple of weeks off and you know that that actually really helped. The other thing that I do, I'm trying to shoot and record and make as many videos as I can so I have a couple in reserve for those really busy times where maybe I can't film or edit and I want a week, or I want a week off. So I really really want to be in that position. I had achieved that in December I'd done a few and I knew I was going on holidays for example so I could just I had them stockpiled and all, out they went and it really really worked well so that's what I would do to avoid burnout actually get a couple of videos keep them in the background for those moments when you think you know I think I just want to have a break how did I decide what kind of videos to make has there been a change of direction in my videos and what was the reason I asked my family I said when you think of me if you think of YouTube channel what do you think I could do um, so they gave me some ideas. I'd always thought about travel tips. That had always been in the back of my mind. I also knew that I wanted to do seasonal things. So at Halloween, did makeup and at Christmas time, did gift wrapping and decorating ideas. And I still want to do that. I like the seasonal sorts of things and what's happening at the time. Um, so doing a, a few videos like that are quite fun. I've done a couple of interview videos. So. I, I, I just do what strikes me and I find it's really interesting that I, if I go out and am looking at something I think, oh that would be a really good video. I do want to grow my channel as most of us do and I asked my daughters, my, my two daughters recently, um, what they had suggestions for me to do and it was interesting because they both kind of said the same thing and they said, you know mom, when I think of you I think of two things. I think of law and I think music and I thought oh that's interesting because I haven't really done either of those things. I did one small music video uh, a few months ago. So I thought right okay I'm gonna take your advice. So I've done some legal videos there's some more to come as well and I'm also doing some music videos. I hope to also do some more interviews and um, any other. I, I want to do art so I think I'm gonna do some of that as well. So those are kind of the changes that I'm looking at. What do I do to make friends and develop community on YouTube? Commenting on other people's uh, channels is really, really key. I love it when YouTube channels that I follow do shout outs and then I go check them out and then I've made friends and gotten subscribers from doing that because we all kind of like like-minded people, don't we? It's really interesting. One of the reasons I didn't do this earlier is because I thought you know, the internet's an awful place and people write nasty comments and being of a certain vintage, I'm gonna get all these negative comments about, um, you know, wrinkles or age or whatever, your hair. Actually, that, that has absolutely not happened. In fact, I was actually happy when I got my first thumbs down on a video. You know what, you're not a real YouTuber until you get thumbs down. So, no. Don't you thumbs down this video. It all comes as part of the package. I wanted to do this eight years ago. I was too shy about it. I didn't even tell anybody I really wanted to do it, but. 
so I didn't and then three years ago I was really seriously thinking about it and I thought oh all those negative things and all that you know what if you have the slightest slightest inclination to make a YouTube video just do it don't worry about trolls and stuff honestly you're so small and unknown that you won't get trolls for a long 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 time and by the time that you are at the stage where you would actually get trolls Ah, you'll be old and seasoned at it and it won't even bother you. It really won't. So those are my thoughts on uh, making YouTube. Thanks again, Brad and Amy, for tagging me on this. It was really fun, actually. So bye for now.